the Commander-in-Chief. In the Oval Office, George Bush meets with his top military advisors. There's nothing that is as difficult or uh, agonizing a decision to make as sending America's young men and women into uh, battle, knowing that some of them are not going to come back. And I saw it weigh on this president and weigh very heavily on him. Despite the enormous risks, the commander-in-chief gives the order, unleashing the coalition's massive army, sending more than half a million troops into battle an all-out assault on the Iraqi army. The final phase of Operation Desert Storm begins. Tonight is this coalition of countries seeks to do that which is right and just. I have directed General Norman Schwarzkopf to use all forces available, including ground forces, to eject the Iraqi army from Kuwait. Handpicked by Bush and Powell to command the coalition army, four-star General Norman Schwarzkopf devises a daring surprise attack. He fakes the head-on assault the Iraqis are expecting from the south and sends the main coalition army on an end run into Iraq first, a battle plan that mirrors General Robert Lee's legendary winning strategy at Vicksburg during the U.S. Civil War. We deployed half of the United States Army and that's what formed the, the left hook. That was the armored punch that punched through their trenches. We were very successful. We swept around the flank, encountered these forces deploying in the middle of the night and smashed them. Colin Powell gives the commander-in-chief real-time reports from the Gulf. Coalition ground forces sweep into Iraq and Kuwait. Iraqi troops are being overrun. By evening on day one of the ground campaign, Marine units are closing in on Kuwait City. It was a shooting gallery. All night long, we would hit these groups of forces and didn't even know they were being attacked until their tanks began to blow up. 